Okay, here we go. I'm so glad this is a math class because I can't even imagine that class. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Oh, oh man, I'm not sure you'd want to see that. Okay. All right, so um, let's make sure my microphone is on. We are doing, we are moving on. We have a test on Monday, right? Last class was substitution, yes? Yes. And I know that the homework went, you know, <coughs> went different uh, for different people, right? So some people had some issues, but I'm hoping by this time you've gotten through the homework. I've made the test. It's printed. It's been delivered to the person who's proctoring it. So at this point, there's no changes to it. It's going to be, I believe, 13 questions. And I would say of, of what we've covered up to this point, okay, is like two-thirds of the test, which means the last third of the test is what we do today which means you have to go make sure you understand it and you're going to need to make sure that you understand it and grasp it for Monday's test. And it's not because I'm trying to torture you, it's because this is, the, this is the pace of the course. So what we learned today, you're going to be tested on Monday. So make sure you watch the homework solution videos. You can reach out to me for help. If you need help, I will be available throughout the weekend. I just won't be here on campus on Monday. Does that make sense? Okay. So. If you have any questions about last time's homework, I invite you after class if you'd like to meet with me. We can do that, um, or I'll hang out right after if it's something short. But we're going to move on to the next method or the next sort of approach to doing this integration, and that is integration by parts. And, and let me just show you where it comes from, okay, the formula. So the formula actually it, so this is a formula, all right? So the previous section was not a formula, right? It was not a formula. This is an actual formula. So the formula go, comes from this. We start off with the idea from Cal 1 that if we want to take the derivative of a product, right? If you have a product of two things, what would the, uh, the derivative be? Derivative of the first one times the second one times the first. And there's different ways this is taught. These are switched. Sometimes these are flipped. But that's, that's it right there, right? So I'm going to use slightly different notation now. If I do f of x times g of x, then the derivative would be f prime of x times g of x plus uh, g prime of x times f of x, right? So that's our product rule from Cal 1. So now, let's, let's imagine we're looking at this line right here, and what I'd like to do is find the antiderivative on both sides of the equation, the antiderivative. So what would the antiderivative, the antiderivative of the derivative be? So they would kind of like undo each other, wouldn't they? They kind of like cancel out. So the left side should be what? f of x times g of x, right? Now on this side, when I do the antiderivative, I have to do the antiderivative to each one of these, don't I? Because there's a plus between them. So the antiderivative of this one will just be antiderivative of f prime of x, g of x. And now I'm going to put dx here because dx is good. Remember, this is our differential. It tells us what our variable is. And I said it's just always going to be at the end of an integral. And then I have plus this one, which is g prime x times f of x ooh, dx. All right. So just real quick backtrack. Cal 1, we talked about the product rule. Everyone's happy with that. And then all we do now is say, OK, integrate both sides. Take the antiderivative both sides, and then we get this line right here. This right here is the formula. And, and you may look at it and go, what? How is that a formula to help us find antiderivatives? Well, what we can do is we can say, let's, let's solve for this, 
Okay, let's get that integral by itself on one side of the equation. All right, let's isolate this, this integral right here. That means move this integral to the other side. And when we move to the other side, we just subtract it, right? So we get this. We get that this integral, I'm going to write it the other, the other uh, way. I'm going to flip the f and g. That should be equal to what's on the left side? f of x times g of x. And then minus what integral? That one, right? So I'm going to write it this way. g of x times f prime of x dx. Did you just How did it become minus? I'm sorry. I'm trying to solve for this, right? Right. Oh. Okay, so I just subtracted that integral on this side. It went away, and I subtract the integral on this side, so it becomes a minus. We good? That is the formula. Now, you should be looking at that going, what? Like, why? How is that useful, right? Because all it does is it says, if you ever have an integral, it now turns into this thing, and this looks uglier, doesn't it? And it still has an integral, right? But what's, what's great about it is this. See in this integral right here, it appears that we have a function, right? A function here, times this is the derivative of some function, right? And in the new integral, it changes. What changes? Instead of working with f in here, f of x, what are we going to work with in the new integral? G of x. The derivative of f, right? And then instead of working with the derivative of something here, we're going to work with its antiderivative. So what's happening in this formula is you're getting something called the transferring of the derivative. That's what this formula is all about. This is called integration, uh, integration by parts. That's the name of the technique. Okay? Integration by parts. You'll hear me, or you'll see me do IBP from here on out. I'm referring to integration by parts. So the formula says if we have an integral and somehow we can break it up into two things where one of them is a function and the other one is a derivative of some function, then in the new integral, we'll work with the, the derivative of that and then the antiderivative of that. So they've switched places. The derivative has transferred from one function to the other. Do you all see that in the formula? It's transferred? All right. Um, there's, there's another version of this written a different way. Instead of using f and g, we use the functions u and v instead of f and g. And if you do it that way, then your, your formula looks like this. It's, it's um, u times dv equals u times v minus integral of v times du. All right, so here the v is really the what? But comparing it to this, the u is really the what? The u is really the f of x, right? So this is some function of x. The dv is really the derivative of some function, right? And then that becomes minus f times g, that's u times v, minus the integral of v and then du. So th again, they've switched places, right? That's the formula that you'll see in your formula sheets. That's the formula on your formula sheets. It's the first formula on your formula sheets for integration, all right? And for those of you who have made and learned this already, you'll learn the, uh, the quick little, little saying to remember it. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet minus voodoo, V-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O -O. That's the way I learned it, okay? Ultraviolet minus voodoo. So when you're using integration by parts, your answer, this integral should turn into ultraviolet minus the integral of voodoo. Right? You all see it? Ultraviolet minus voodoo. 
Don't forget the integral sign, though. So it's just a nice, people usually just burn, that burns in almost instantly for everyone. All right, would you like to see this in action? Because right now it doesn't seem why this would be useful, like how it would be helpful. But we're going to do some problems. I think what we'll do is we'll start, yeah, we'll start with a really kind of basic one. All right, so now we have to take a step back. We have to make sure we run through the things that we know already. So the first thing we learned was stuff that we brought over from calculus that, you know, we can go backwards just by what we knew from Cal 1, right? For example, if it were just this, we'd be good, right? Antiderivative of that is just e to the x. But that's not what we have. We have an x in front of it. So are there any other rules that we could use or things that we could use from, the, from Cal 1? No. There's not. Okay, so how about um, substitution? Last class. Do we see something and its derivative? E to the x, what's its derivative? E to the x. So if you're going to say this e to the x is your u, you need to see its derivative here now. And the derivative e to the x is e to the x, and it's, it's not here, right? Because you've already called that u, so that now you need its derivative there. So that substitution wouldn't work. How about this substitution? u is equal to just x. You could do that, but you're wasting your time because all you'd do if you do that is you'd rewrite, you'd basically rewrite the whole problem in terms of u. It would just be u e to the u at the end, du. So you, I don't ever recommend you make this substitution ever. You're, you're just wasting time. So no basic thing, no substitution, right? No substitution. So the next thing on our plate is integration by parts. So what we want to do with integration by parts is try and look at this as being two things. Put the formula up here again. Um, u dv equals uv minus integral v du. All right, so one of these, if we're, if we're going to use integration by parts, one of these things has to be u. And the other one has to be the derivative of something. And we actually have two choices. We could let this be u, right? That could be u. And this e to the x dx, that part right there, could be the derivative of something. Right? Do you agree that e to the x dx by itself is the derivative of what? That's a derivative of e to the x, right? So that piece right here could be like the dv and then that would force this piece to be my u, right? That's one way I could have looked at it. What's another way I could have looked at it? I could have written it this way, right? That's multiplication, so I could have changed that. Now, if I do it this way, is this the derivative of something? Yeah, what's, that is the derivative of what? x squared over 2, or 1 half x squared. So I, I know the antiderivative of this, right? So you could look at that as the derivative of something, right? OK. So this could be my dv, and this one could be my u. Do you all see that? There's two different ways I could approach this with integration by parts. But only one of them makes sense. And so integration by parts is all about what? I said it's, it's all about transferring the derivative over, right? On one of these, you're going to, on one of these, you're going to differentiate u, right? In the new integral, you're going to differentiate u, and then to get to v, you're going to integrate. So would you rather differentiate that and integrate that and have that in your new integral, or would you rather differentiate this and integrate this? Do you all follow me? So let's think about it. What would, what would du look like in the new integral 
What's the derivative of x? Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? That's real nice. And then what's the antiderivative of this one? e to the x. So what's my new integral going to be? Just e to the x. And can you handle that? Absolutely. Does that make sense? I'm trying, you need to see it. It has to be here that you're seeing this, all right? Why is this way not as good? Because what is this going to become in the new integral? Still itself, right? Because its derivative is just itself. Okay, so I have e to the x in the new integral, but what else is going to be there? The antiderivative of this, which would be your 1 half x squared. So what's in the new integral if we use it this way? e to the x and 1 half x squared, which is worse than what you started with, isn't it? So this is the way to go. So when you're trying to do this integration by parts, one kind of rule of thumb is to try and pick one. The one that you pick for you is the one that gets nicer on that side. OK? Now, it doesn't always work that way, unfortunately. But that's kind of like where you want to start. So I'm going to throw this one out. That one I'm not going to do because the new integral becomes worse than the original integral. So let's, let's go ahead. Let's continue with this. Um, the way that I do this, I'm going to have the answer here in a second. But the way that I do all my integration by parts problems, and trust me, there are many ways you can approach this. Shortcut things I've seen all over YouTube. This is just the way I do it. Every time I do an integration by parts problem, I draw a table. Okay? I put u here, and I put dv here. All right, now let me explain to you why I put this. Because what I'm going to do every time I do an integration parts problem is I'm always going to have to determine what's u and what's dv, and that's my choice, right? I just showed you. I had two choices. And my choice is to let this one be u and that one to be dv. So I put that in my table first. u is equal to x, and dv is equal to e to the x dx. All right? Now, I'm going to complete the table. And the way I complete the table is if you move down on the table, you're going to differentiate. And if you move up, you're going to integrate. So up is integration. And down is, I'll just put prime mark for derivative. So what, is, what, what I'm going to do is take this equation, take the derivative on both sides, the derivative of u, du, derivative of x, dx, really like a 1, right? 1 dx. And then here, I have to integrate to go up. So if I integrate, what's the antiderivative of v, of dv? Should take me back to v, right? And the antiderivative of e to the x dx should just be e to the x. Now, don't worry about the plus c. We're going to throw a plus c at the end of the final answer anyway, because we're, we're finding an antiderivative. Do you all understand this little table? All right, now once you have the table, yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're like this. So I'm not sure if that's, it's a glare? Yeah. Okay, it's a glare, okay, all right. I, this is such an important thing, I just want to make sure I'm, that everyone's coming along, because this is one of those things where like, once the bus leaves at the station, like, it's gone. It's hard to catch the bus, yes. So if you go up, that's the Antiderivative down here. And, you, and I'm always going to start by putting in the u and the dv, all right? And then I just, I'll differentiate down to get du, and I'll integrate up to get v. Now, why is it that I want v, and why is it that I want du? We'll look at the formula, right? I'm about to use this formula, so I need to know what u is, I need to know what v is. I need to know what v is, and I need to know what du is. And this table contains all of that information, all right? All right, so now, after I've got this table, I just write this down. Ultraviolet minus voodoo. So what's ultraviolet? U times V will be that times that, right? No integral sign, just U times V. So this is equal to X, E to the X. And then what's the next thing in the formula? Minus the integral of V du. So V is this, right? E to the X. And what's du? dx. e to the x dx. That's, that's it. Can you, the question now is can you handle that integral? Yeah, the antiderivative e to the x is itself. So this now becomes equal to 
x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. I always throw the plus c because we're done with the antiderivative, right? Just out of curiosity, what happens to the dx? Why would it become du? Where? Uh, Here? Yeah, considering it's an actual quantity in the problem. It's still just a placeholder. It's still just keeping track of my variable. So this is like what Chris asked about a few classes ago, like what happens to the dx, right? It's, it just kind of vanishes, but it, if, you, if it makes you any happier, you could just say it becomes the plus c. It doesn't, but that's, you know. Okay, so that's it. That's the first example of integration by parts. Now, what we're saying is that if you take the derivative of this, right? If you take the derivative, you should get back that right there, right? So we'll take derivative real quick. Derivative here, we have a product rule, right? So derivative first one is 1 times e to the x plus derivative of e to the x, which is itself, times x, done with the product rule, minus the derivative of e to the x, which is itself. Derivative of constant is 0. First one and second one cancel. In the middle term is this, OK? So that checks. I went fast, but that's the way it is. All right, yes, no, maybe so? Yeah. Okay, so let's do something else. I want to do another example, but before I do it, I want to see if, if you, after doing substitution, if you've gotten yourself to a point where you're comfortable with the following integral. What is the antiderivative of cosine of x, dx? I'm not trying to insult you right now. Sine x. Sine x plus c. Okay, what is the antiderivative of cosine of 5x dx? Sine of 5x, I agree with that, but there's something missing here. What do you need? Not, five, not times 5, one fifth out front. You need to actually divide by 5. Because what happens here is that if you take the derivative of this, it's going to be cosine 5x times 5. And you don't want the 5 there, so you have to kill the 5. Right? And with that same logic, what would that be? Negative 1 third. Right? Sine of negative 3x plus c. Understand? Okay, see, what about this? Negative one-tenth cosine of 10x. So why is there a one-tenth here? Because you've got to kill off the 10, right, when it comes out. And the negative's there because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You want it to be positive. So, yes? So when we have these, when we have something like this, let's say we're trying to find the antiderivative of some function, and inside that function we have something like ax. So here we had like some function, cosine, inside of it was 1x. Here it's some function, inside of it was like 5x. Here some function, inside of it was like negative 3x, right? Then what are we always going to have to put in our answer? 1 over a. Okay, and then whatever the antiderivative of that is, right? So 1 over a, and then I'm going to call it capital F of ax plus c, where capital F is the antiderivative of that. So this little scalar, these scalars inside these things, they're going to pop up throughout the rest of the semester. And we cannot be doing substitution. Like, you can't be saying, oh, I'm going to let you be 5x and then going through and doing substitution. No, this, this needs to become automatic at some point. Let me give you one more. What would this be? <coughs> uh, secant squared of pi x plus 1 dx, antiderivative. One over pi. So 1 over pi. Tangent of pi x plus 1 plus c. 
So the idea here is that the derivative of tangent of pi x plus 1 should give you secant squared of pi x plus 1. Right? That. But if you took derivative of what's inside of here, you're going to get a pi, aren't you? So you've got to kill off the pi. Notice that the plus 1 doesn't matter, does it? It's only that, that number in front of the x that has an impact. So that will be this. All right, now let's do the next problem. How about this one? So let me put an answer up here and you tell me if this is right. Is that right? No. Product. Why not? There's a product. Yeah, there's a product here, right? So that answer was me just taking the antiderivative of that and multiplying it by the antiderivative of that. Right? You'll see what I did? And that's very, very wrong. And calculus would be a lot easier if this is the way it was, right? If that's all you had to do. But that's, that's unfortunately not the case. So we have to go through this and we have to look and we have to say, okay, how do we deal with this? And you run through the things we know. There's no like basic thing. Uh, basic U substitution will not work here. So integration by parts. Try it at least. You have to pick a U and you have to pick a DV. But again, I, the big point here is the transferring of the derivative. When you're looking at this, <coughs> you're picking one of these and you're going to differentiate it, which means that when it goes to the new integral, it's going to hopefully be nicer, right? And then one of these is going to go to the new integral and be integrated and hopefully it doesn't get too complicated. So any ideas for a choice of U and DV here? Just u be the x, and dv will be the sine 10x. Can you integrate sine 10x? Yes. yes. So you got to make sure that whatever dv is, you better be able to integrate it, OK? So u here is x. dv is sine of 10x dx. And now I'm going to finish my table, right? Let's see, either Edward or Heidi can help us finish the table. Just finish this table out. I know DU. Okay, DU is? 1DX. Okay, 1DX. You know what V is. What's the antiderivative of sine? Negative. Oh, negative cosine. And then how are you going to handle the 10 inside? We just did. 1 over 10. So we're going to have negative 1 over 10 cosine of 10x. Okay, that's the antiderivative here. Okay? Everyone happy with that? Okay, now ultraviolet minus voodoo. That's what we write. So ultraviolet, what is ultraviolet going to be? This times this, right? That times that. So that's going to wind up being like negative 1 tenth x cosine of 10x. So I just put the x <coughs> in between the 1 tenth and the cosine. And now I have what? Minus the integral. Now I always like when I write this minus the integral, I always, I always leave a little bit of space right here. Why do you think I leave a little space right here? If there's any constants that come out. Now I'm looking at voodoo now, right? Voodoo is always going to be these two across the diagonal right here. So when I look at voodoo, these two together, do I have any numbers I can pull out of the integral completely? Negative one tenth, right? Can come out. So when I pull the negative one tenth out, it's going to become plus one tenth. See how the minus became plus, right? And then what's still inside that integral? Cosine 10 x dx. And hopefully you can handle that. Can you handle that? Yeah? Antiderivative cosine 10x should be 1 tenth, one -tenth sine 10x, right? So we are there. 
Now we already had a one tenth out here, didn't we? So now we have the antiderivative of that. We get another one tenth out here, sine of 10x, and then we have plus c. This would be a good time if you have any questions. Okay. Let's turn the screws a little bit more. Now this right here is going to be almost like punishment, but so far the two problems that I've given, given you with integration by parts, what's happened is in both of them we've let u be the x, right? And the good thing about that was that in the new integral it became dx or just one. So it kind of vanished from the integral, didn't it? So take a look at this one. <coughs> That's x cubed times e to the x dx. This time can you choose a u that's just going to vanish away? No, right? So like if you pick u to be x cubed, over in the new integral it's going to be what? 3x squared. And then you can integrate that. We already know that. That's not going to be a problem, right? Um, what if you do it the other way around? What if you let the e to the x be the u? In the new integral it will be still e to the x, right? And then this part, x cubed, in the new integral will become the antiderivative, one fourth x to the fourth, which got uglier, right? Do you all agree? So what do you think? Could we do three x squared as, as u? Because that's the derivative there, so when you do du, you would have one over. Wait a minute, start again. Can we do what is what? Can we use three x squared as u? No, because you don't, whatever you plug in here for u and whatever you use for dv, these two things better be right there. So you only have two choices for this, x cubed or e to the x. <coughs> so what do you all think? When, go ahead. If you do them either or, it's not going to be wrong, right? One might just do a little harder. Uh, no, one of them's not going to work. Okay. One of them will get too complicated. You'll start going backwards. You'll start adding difficulty to it. So w the integration by parts is all about transferring the derivative, right? When you do it, you're trying to get one function to like turn into something nice, and you're hoping the new integral will be doable, right? So, if we do, let's see how much of this you can see, in, like see in your mind. Is that can you do? Can, does that make any sense to see something in your mind? Okay, visualize. Okay, x cubed here, e to the x here. Okay, all right. What is in the new integral? What's in the new integral? 3x squared times e to the x, which we said still has the x squared in there, right? So, what? Do it again. Do it again. Why not do integration by parts again on that new integral that, that just appeared? Because doesn't that new integral have, right? Just If we do this, if we put the x cubed here, and we have e to the x dx here, the new integral, the voodoo, right? The integral voodoo part is going to be like a 3x squared um, e to the x dx. So with that one, that first iteration of integration by parts, what were you able to do? Turn that integral into this integral, right? You pulled the power down on the x by one. So if we do integration by parts again, this time letting u be what? x squared and dv be this, that next time through, the x squared is going to go down to an x. And then you do it again. And the next time through, the x will go away. Welcome to Cal 2. All right. This is going to require several iterations of integration by parts. But what's more important is for you to understand the, the process. I can kill this off, right? I can make this go away if I do enough of this formula over and over. 
And this one, every time I go through, I integrate it. But it's okay because this one I integrate just stays the same. So the powers on the X's are coming down and the E's just staying there the whole time. All right, beautiful, let's do it. So first, first step, U is uh, X cubed, DV is E to the X DX. DU is then 3X squared DX and V is E to the X. All right, <coughs> this now becomes I guess Edward's up. Edward? Let's yes. go. Okay, so what is, were you here last time? Uh, no. no, it's okay. I just, I have you as not being here, so I just want to make sure, because that's why I'm calling on you. Uh, so I, I just want to know what the next, like what's going to, what that's going to become. So do you have the formula? I can write it down so everyone has it over here. Ultraviolet minus integral voodoo, right? So what do you got? X cubed times e to the x. Everyone agree? Okay, x cubed e to the x. And then minus. Minus integral. I didn't leave myself space. Damn it. Voodoo, right? Yeah. So it's basically this times that. And there's a three there. Yeah, so so pull the three out. And so what's in the integral? Uh, x, x squared. Uh huh. E to the x dx. Okay, so that's where we are, right? Now the idea here is this this right here without the three, okay, is a new problem. And we must now go execute integration by parts on that problem again. New table, new, new ultraviolet minus voodoo. Just for, Just for that, yep. And whatever we get is gonna be placed right here where this box is and there's gonna be a, three in, a negative three in front of the whole thing. So here comes my second iteration of integration by parts. I need to choose a U and I need to choose a DV for my second iteration. And <clears throat> Ricardo? Yes, sir. Where's Ricardo? Two? Okay, so Ricardo, you're up in his terms of telling me what U DV would be. Okay, so X squared, E the X DX, and then DU, 2X DX, V. E the x. Okay, so I'll have you read out my next line. So watch what I'm doing, everyone. Equals x cubed e to the x minus 3. My recommendation at this point would be a huge bracket that's going to separate your next ultraviolet minus voodoo. That's the ultraviolet minus voodoo from the first one, right? So I'm, this is that, that part, and now here comes this part. Go ahead, Ricardo. x squared times e to the x minus uh, integral, uh, so e x, I mean two, two x. 2x two x e to the x dx and I'm going to pull the 2 out okay All we're trying to do is use this until we can get to an integral we can do. We still can't do this, right? But wasn't, didn't we just do that problem a minute ago? We did, didn't we? That was the, one of the first ones I gave you. So we have the answer to this, but let's just, let's just continue it over here. Let's, let's act like we didn't do it before. I have a new integration by parts that I'm doing just on this piece. U is what? x and dv is e to the x dx and so when we finish our table out du is just going to be 1 dx you don't need the one but and v is equal to e to the x and so now that red part gets replaced with what we just got there 
Are we eventually going to distribute the negative? We are going to distribute everything out. Yep. Well, these are all terrible. I'm letting you go ahead and figure out what ultraviolet minus voodoo is there, but I'm, I think I'm ready to write it all out, and I'm going to do it in just purple here. So I have x cubed. Let me put it up top higher so you can see it. Okay, we have x cubed e to the x minus 3 bracket x squared e to the x minus 2, another bracket, the antiderivative of this, which is x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x, that's your voodoo, dx, close the bracket, close the bracket. And what is this right here? That's just e to the x. And then we have a plus c, right? But I'll just throw that on to the final, final answer. We're almost there. Now it's just algebraically just cleaning it up. That's all that's left. I mean, we've done the actual antiderivative part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this through here first. Okay, the, the negative 2 through. So x cubed e to the x minus 3 bracket x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2e to the x, close bracket. I'll go ahead and put my plus c now. And the plus c just goes on the very end. So does everyone see that negative 2 going to this here? And negative 2 going to this answer, because remember, this integral is just e to the x. So that becomes a plus 2. And one more distribution. The negative 3 goes through to everything. x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x minus 6e to the x plus c. Someone can check me on that, but I'm pretty sure I got it all. That's it. Yeah, then unfortunately. What, the only thing we really could do here is maybe factor an e to the x out. You could do that. You could factor an e to the x out. Right? So, I mean, maybe you could do this. e to the x, and then you'd be left with like x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 6 plus a constant. You could do that. Pardon? Is that a pattern that we'll see other places where it's just like pair derivative over and over? So let's look at those parentheses. It's just like it's minus derivative plus derivative minus derivative. Is that a pattern with the like this, then it's derivative, and then it's derivative again with the alternating? Um, it's only for e to the x when it has a polynomial in front of it. Yeah, so we can't do it like arbitrarily for e to the x with anything, but if it's a polynomial next to it, yes. Yeah, so how could we check this answer? Take the derivative, right? It's not that bad. I mean, it's a product rule, right? Right here? So you go the derivative of the first one, which is e to the x, times the second one, which is just that. And then plus the derivative of this times that. And then if you did it and cleaned up, things would cancel. And eventually, you would, you would get back to the original x cubed e to the x. Yes? Is it necessary to? Yeah, I have to multiply this one, like that. Or what? I can keep it like that till the second uh, first line. Like that one? Yeah, well, when you say have to, you know, I mean, you don't have to. You have to get to the point where you no longer have any integrals. Okay. Then you have an answer. But as far as distribution, that shouldn't be something that you're concerned about having to do. You know what I mean? Just, just do it. Yeah, clean it up. Get it all. Because, um, you know, what if, what if you had to take the antiderivative of this now? You know, I mean, you would want it in its cleanest form. All right, so what have we seen? In the first couple of problems, it was kind of obvious what u was, nice and clean. 
This one, oh, you got to use the integration by parts more than one time. Okay, but I think you kind of, I hope you're kind of seeing that these powers of x's are really nice in the problem because they, they start to vanish over here when we do this, yes? Okay, so let's do this one. Jordan? Where's Jordan at? He's not here? Okay. Chris Ochoa. All right, so I'm going to give you a second to think about it. And then over here, I'm going to put you in DV. And if you get it right, if you get the right choice here, we all get the day off. The good news, Chris, is that you only have two choices. So, you know, but I want you to think about what those would be, become in the new integral. I want everyone thinking about what it would become in the new integral if you choose u a certain way or the other way. So can you use u for uh, i and x? Okay. Are you asking me, can I? Can you? Yes, you can, right? So you're telling me that's what you want me to do? Yeah. Okay. So you want to go ln, ln. Uh, this is the natural log, right? But in French, they always do it backwards. So this is log, logarithm natural. So ln, not in. A lot of people think that's an i. It's an l. Okay. Ln x, right? And then over here, what would it have to be here then, Chris? X to the fourth. X to the fourth dx. Don't forget the dx. So this is Chris's suggestion. So is it, how do they do it back in the day when the gladiators were going? So what are we going to do with Chris? Are we going to thumbs down him or thumbs up him? What do you all think? I think it might be better to do x to the fourth and just do a bunch of... Okay, so this, this is Chris's choice. For those of you who want the other way, let's look at your way. Let's compare them. So that means here you have to do x to the fourth, and that's been working for us, hasn't it? Unfortunately, it looks like if we do it this way, we're going to have to do it like multiple times, right? Okay, dv then would have to be what? Natural log x dx, yes? We can't do the antiderivative. Ah, so what's, you can't do this one. Look, how are you going to find the antiderivative of natural log of x? The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. What's the antiderivative of natural log of x? We don't have that, do we? Right? This way, though, look, this actually does work because the derivative of natural log of x is what? 1 over, one over x. x. And the antiderivative of this is something with x to the fifth, right? So what is your voodoo going to look like? It's just going to be powers of x. That's all it's going to be. So, Chris, you get to that. Good. This won't work. So why do you think I'm showing this to you? I don't want you to get into <laughs> I don't want you to get into a habit of being like, oh, as soon as I see x to a power, that's the u. I mean, that's guaranteed. That's the u. Just because it's worked for us doesn't mean that there's another problem that would present itself in a way that we should not use that as the the u. All right. So natural log of x derivative is one over x dx. Antiderivative here gives us v. This is one fifth x to the fifth, and Jonathan Salinas is up. Ultraviolet minus voodoo is the next step. <clears throat> uh -huh. Times that. So let's write that in more like a cleaner looking way. So one fifth out front first. And then do you want the x to the fifth before the natural log or after? I mean, you don't have to put it after or before, but just think about the way that looks. Like, what looks better, that or that? Which of these would be better, do you all think? Second one. Second one, because here someone might think that's x to the sixth. 
but it's actually, that x is trapped in the argument. So it's probably better notation for the x to the fifth outside. Natural log x. Okay, keep going. And then minus. Minus, a little bit of space there for you. And then bring out the one-fifth. Bring the one-fifth out. Can I bring the one over x out? No, you can never bring a variable out. Only constants, right? So one-fifth comes out. And then what do you have? And then x to the fifth. x to the fifth. Uh, one times one over x, which is? x to the fourth, right? Or you're doing x to the fifth times one over x, you're just dividing out one factor of x, right? So that's gonna be x to the fourth. So x to the fourth, dx. Make sense? Is it dx on, I thought the dx was on the left. Uh, the left of what? Of left, this? Uh, like uh, the first quantity, like one fifth x. This right here? No, nope, because remember, the, the formula is ultraviolet, right? There's no integral over here. Oh, it's always ultraviolet. And look at ultraviolet on the table. Ultraviolet on the table didn't have any dx's in it. The, DV, the du and the dv have the dx's in them. <clears throat> okay. Now, can we integrate this? x to the fourth. Yes, right? Yes, we can. We don't need any more integration by parts. We're there. We've made it. The promised land is straight ahead. What is the antiderivative of x to the fourth? One fifth x to the fifth plus some constant. And that'll turn out to be like one twenty-fifth x to the fifth. What do you think so far? Yes? Yes? What about it? Where's the x? Where? On the in the purple? The original? No. Oh, 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 okay. Well, look, we did it all at one step. We, what we did is this. We took those two and multiplied them. So we did 1 fifth x to the fifth times 1 over x dx. The 1 fifth came out, and that's x to the fourth. x to the fifth over x x to the fourth. All right. So if, if now you had to go back and look at this problem, choosing u and v, how much of this table can you visualize? Like, can you see the derivative of that being 1 over x? in the bottom left corner. Can you see that natural log here, x to the fourth here, 1 over x here, x to the fifth up there. Multiply those, it's just going to be x to the fourth. I can integrate that. Is that too much? You had a table for your quotient rule? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Hmm. Did you have a question? I thought. Okay. Next one. Why are you saying that? Why are you doing that? Just being dramatic. No, but I want to know why you're being dramatic. Uh, Do you recognize something with this that is bad? <clears throat> okay. I thought you saw something that, that made you not happy, which you shouldn't be happy. But there's something in particular that, that makes this one just, just specially bad. So, okay, good. The whole idea behind integration by parts <clears throat> is that when you do it, your new integral should be something you should handle, right? And so when we've been doing it, things have been getting nicer as we do it, right? On this one, 
The sine x, if you let that be u, what's it going to be in the new integral? Cos Cosine x. And e to the x, if that's dv in the new integral, it's going to be e to the x. So all, or negative, depending on how we choose them. But do you all agree that in new integral, we're going to have cosine and we're going to have e to the x still? And so nothing got better, right? Nothing went away. It's just like a cosine and an e again. So then you're like, well, maybe I'll just do integration by parts again. So you do it again, and then you're like, okay, you still have sines and e's, right? So you're still, like, how are you ever going to make anything get better? Do you all see what I'm saying? Okay, it's going to work, though. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Let's just do it, okay? Here we go. This is a classic problem. This is, I'm going to put a star next to it because it's such a classic problem. All right, so let's run through integration by parts the first time. Now, what you choose for u and dv here actually doesn't matter. You can do it either way for this one. <clears throat> I'm going to let u be sine x. I'm going to let dv be e to the x dx. All right. Chris, different, yep. So finish this table out for me here. Du and V. Cosine x, dx. Don't forget, always put the dx on the bottom row here. And then V, e to the x. Okay, so keep going. What is this going to be in terms of ultraviolet minus voodoo here? Sine x, e to the x. Minus, a little space there, integral, yeah. e to the x times that. Uh-huh. So I'm going to write this way, cosine x e to the x dx. The only reason I'm writing it that way is because I'm just being consistent. I've been putting the trig function in front of the exponential. That's just the way I've been doing it. All right, so we look at that and we say to ourselves again, like, okay, that doesn't help, right? That doesn't help. Everyone agree? But I said, do it again, and things are going to just work. All right, so here we go. Second time through, we're going to do the same thing we did here. We're going to choose the trig one here and leave this one as the e. So if I do the trig one here, it's cosine x. I don't have a choice. And dv here would be e to the x dx. Tavio. Okay. Finish the table out for me here. Negative sine of x, dx, okay, and then v, e to the x. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back up here. Equals sine x, e to the x, minus, okay, so at this point, minus, that's where we're going to start doing the ultraviolet minus voodoo, right? So I'm going to put this in brackets. Okay, go ahead. Nope, no integral, hold on. This, this, yeah, this integral is going to become the ultraviolet minus voodoo. Okay, so what is it? It's cosine x. Cosine x, e to the x. Now you're minus. Uh, e to the x. Okay, integral. Minus. Uh-huh, minus. E to the x. E to the x. Times sine of x. Times sine of x, right? So, but it's minus, right? Everyone agree? We're going to have minus. So, man, you know what I'll write down. Minus sine x e to the x dx, close the bracket. All right, that's where we are, yes? Can you take the minus out? Yeah, I'm going to do the minus out and make it plus on the next line. Okay, y'all still with me? Okay, very important step coming. Sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x, what are these going to become? Plus. plus, but then I'm going to distribute the minus through. See, that minus is going to go here, then that minus will turn these two into a minus again. So minus the integral of what? Sine x e to the x dx. I have a yes? How come the, uh, the, after the, after the cosine, negative cosine e to the x, where? Just Here? Yeah. Okay, so, so what happens right there? That becomes oh, positive, right? Yeah. 